Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Today we're going to be talking PCV systems. Now, there's a big discussion, should you get a catch can, should you get a PCV system? Now what I'm going to try and do today is explain a sort of an overview of what it does, why it does it, and some other little things that might, you might find a bit better um, if you're going to keep it, if you're going to change to a catch can, it's, it's all relevant. So before we get stuck into it, let's jump into the intro. Okay, so we're here today and I've stripped the front end off my TT and this is for a couple of reasons, mainly because there's a big list of things I need doing to it. And the other reason is it's a great excuse to show you exactly where it is, what things look like, what sort of condition you'd expect to find them in um, and all that kind of stuff. Now, today we're going to be discussing PCV systems. Now, this is my one. Um, it's, it's original. Um, a lot of these harder pipes have dates on. This is 080801, so you know it's original. Um, everything has all the Audi logos all stamped in it and all that sort of good stuff. So you have a good idea that this is original or it's been replaced. But obviously with the date on, you know it's original. Now, um, it's not in that bad a condition. I must admit, I was expecting to have to fight to get this out. Now this, if I show you, this is the pipe which sits into the engine, which is just there behind the dipstick. Um, and it has a little horseshoe clip, more little U-shaped clip. And that sits over it. I'll show you in a little while. Um, it sh sits over it into a housing and it keeps it in. Now often, and I see this a lot on Facebook, is people struggling to get this out. Now, what I would recommend is it does have a little, has a little seal that just sits around it, a little rubber O-ring, like so. Um, and basically, they can be a bit of a pain to get out. Now, the way I got this out, and it actually managed to come out pretty good. I'll show you the damage first. So, I don't know how well we can see it, but you can see it's sort of like an uneven shape where it's sort of crumbled, but that's actually crumbled. It didn't fall off when I pulled it out. Um, it was actually already missing. I think it's um, crumbled its well away. That's why um, we're going to go on to a metal replacement in a minute. Um, and basically, that's what sits into the engine, and that's where the air comes out, and then it goes a couple of ways um, for other certain things. Obviously, that goes back up into the crankcase. This goes into the inlet manifold, and this goes off around the side. Now, removal is not too bad. Admittedly, it's a lot easier if you take the front end off. Um, ideally, for access is to take the inlet manifold off because if you can imagine that's covering most of the top there, you've only got sort of this little four inch window to work through when the, the front end's on. So it is a lot easier. I'm actually gonna paint my inlet manifold while it's off, so why not, eh? Um, now, the, I've cleaned it all. This was absolutely disgusting. It's like mud. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but this is some of the crap that come off it. And it is just like oily mud. Um, and what all I've done is given it a quick um, clean with some, some brake spray and just given it a wipe over. And all I've done is just so that I can see, because these hard pipes, as long as they're pretty good, they're gonna stay because there's nothing wrong with them. There's no point replacing them. And a genuine one is always better than a cheap aftermarket one, even if it's new. So um, always keep what you can. Uh, I'm going to test all the one-way valves. That's a one-way valve. Um, I can do that by, once I remove the damaged rubber, I can blow up it and it will only go one way. Then you know it's good. Really easy. It's got an arrow on it saying which way flow is, so very simple. Um, this is fine because I replaced this a while back um, when I had the car because when I took the inner manifold off for something else, I did, it was leaking. Um, I replaced this one because it was knackered. And nothing else was a problem. Now... With all rubber hoses and all anything to do with air and engine-wise, it's really easy to find a pipe that's no good. And all you can do is just give it a little squeeze and it stays there. <laughs> so you know that it's basically compromised. Now this one has got a very small split. I don't know if it will pick it up on the camera, but I will do my best to show you. So there, you can just about see... Tell you what, let me get my pick tool. It's got a hole in it, so... In there, look, where I've shoved my pick tool, there is a hole. And it's just on the edges. You can see it's all cracked and minging. Um, so on mine, the only two pipes that are actually no good is, is this one here. And I will replace this, this T um, just so it's all done because I'm going to need to do something because this um, metal replacement one falls short which is fine if you're doing a catch can install because you put hose on it and away it goes. Um, but obviously on this, I'm about two inches too short and I need it to go into there. So I'm going to have to make something easy enough. I'll make a little joiner or I'll make um, the T come a bit closer 
or something. I'll sort something out, but it's easy enough to get oil resistant pipe. Always make sure it's oil resistant pipe because if it's not, if it's just normal rubber hosing, within a year or two, you'll be back in here because you'll have another leak. Now, um, like I said, give it a good clean off and then just visually inspect anything. Make sure there's no cracks. The problem is because when oil um, comes out of these pipes or it drips down off your, your rocker cover gasket or wherever it's coming from, it always makes everything look a bit sweaty, then the dirt sticks to it and it's really, really hard to see. So give it a good clean prior to just throwing it all away. Um, because if it's some of it's good, keep it or, do you know what I mean? Put it on the community, see if anyone else needs it. If you're gonna to go to a catch can, you don't need it anymore rather than binning it because good genuine parts are hard to come by nowadays. Or keep it in the garage for spares. You never know, you might buy another TT. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so this is the, the PCV system. There's this pipe here goes off up into the um, that three-way hose. Um, this is on a 225, of course. Goes on to a three, up to this three-way hose on the top there. And this is a hard pipe. I actually replaced that because that was in two pieces when I got the car. Um, so what I'll do is I'll reposition the camera now over to the car. We'll show that and then we'll have a quick discussion between um, catch cans and PCV systems. Oh, I forgot I was recording. Hey guys, um, so just a quick stop in the middle of the video. And that is to discuss this month's free prize giveaway. Now, if you can't gather what it is, it's sponsored by Juicy Details and Juicy Sweets this month. Um, and they're gonna be giving us to give away the following. Can I have a drum roll? <laughs> We're gonna get one bag of Kilo Sweets, which I have already started eating, so you will get a new bag. Don't worry about that. I just couldn't help myself. So I've actually had to buy a bag. Um, <laughs> so one kilo of sweets, uh, vegan friendly. So suits anyone who, as long as you eat sweets. Um, and also this product. Now it includes a matte trim, a berry quick, a clean trim, and a glass cleaner, which I absolutely love. It is by far my favorite, and it's the one I use day to day. Um, and that alone is four of the best products. I use all of them myself. And if you've just washed your car, that is the perfect four. I literally said to them, look, if anyone's washed their car, what products would you use then? Because then you'll be able to get the most out of it. They've also thrown in two air fresheners, both smelling absolutely amazing. Um, the triggers for the spray bottles and also a glass cloth, which is imperative if you want non-streaky glass. They've also thrown in a juicy dangly, as everyone loves a dangly. So um, this prize giveaway this month is going to run from today, which is the 4th of April, um, as soon as this video goes live until the 18th of April at 4.01 p.m., which is when it will stop. To enter, you need to be over the age of 18 and from the UK. Unfortunately, I can't post outside the UK. Um, and all you have to do to enter, obviously, is to watch this video, <laughs> um, but is to put UK, no spaces, just the letters U and K together in the description in your comment. I'll only take one entry per person, um, and we'll use a generator like we do every month at the last Sunday of the month, which is the 25th of April. So whatever video is on the 25th of April, make sure you're there watching it. So if you want to be entered, all the details are down in the description. So head down there if you want to have a read through before you enter. Uh, but let's get back to the video. Okay, so there's your, this is the hole where that pipe sits. Now the U-Haul shaped clip just sits below there. There's a little guide channel both sides and that pushes in and pulls out this way. Um, now, what I would recommend is when you're doing, undoing the metal one or, or undoing the plastic one or whatever you're doing, try and get your hand above it on the plastic one and just try and sort of wobble it straight and it should lift out. Obviously, if it's cracked and broken already, you're gonna, you've got no chance. But um, once you've done that, if it's still not coming out, I mean, you'll, you'll probably have some, some still in there. Now, there is a metal sleeve on the inside of that pipe. Let me show you. So in here, there is a metal sleeve. So that will probably stay in there um, and you'll just be left fighting that. So normally you can get a, a screwdriver carefully so you don't want to damage the, um, the car, but basically put a screwdriver down the side and just bend the metal bit in. And once you've bent it in a little bit, you can get a pair of long nose pliers and just pull it out. It's a pretty simple one to do. It's just a bit fiddly. Uh, make sure you give this slot a good clean out prior to putting anything else back in it because you don't want any debris in there. This, it just gets a bit muddy as well with the oil and all the dirt and stuff. So give that a good clean out. The hard pipe I was on about is this one here. And that comes down from this, see where it says MTC, this, this three-way hose, which one goes down there, one goes into your puck, 
and one goes into the rocker cover itself. Um, so that's a pretty simple one. Um, I'm just going to sit back up again. Now, the discussion between um, PCVs and, and catch cans. Now, catch cans, they collect basically any vapor, any air which then goes in with oily air that goes into the catch can, and then it cools and becomes condensation. Now, so that will obviously fill it up. One of the reasons I'm not a massive catch can fan is because it's something else that you have to remember to do. And if you don't remember to do it and it fills up and then it, it fills up to the point that it's full, you'll then, it'll then start getting blocked and then it will start doing exactly what a broken PCV system will do and it will start smoking and you'll, it'll run crap and you'll have all the similar issues. So it's fine as long as you're happy to open your engine bay once a month, once every two weeks, depending on how many miles you do. It could be once every three months. Open your engine bay, take the thing off, empty it, make sure it's empty, clean it out, um, maybe check your water, check your oil. It depends how often your driver checks are. Um, if you're doing track days and stuff and you want to sub, uh, simplify your engine bay, then a catch can, again, is probably a good option. But it's, it's all horses for courses. If you want to fit and forget, then that's not ideal because a catch can will require regular maintenance. Often I see people buying cars, they have a catch can already fitted and they don't know how to how to drain it, what to do with it, whether it looks right, because it looks basically like Coca-Cola water and smells like petrol with mayonnaise in. Um, <laughs> that is normal. Of course, it's oily water, which is then cooled and then becomes that sort of mayonnaise and water look horrible stuff. Um, but the PCV system never really allows that because it never comes out of the car and allows to cool. It doesn't create that water vapor. You don't empty your oil and find an extra two or three liters of water in there. So... Every PCV system does have its benefit. It recycles the oily air back in through your inlet. So if you ever take off your boost pipes, you might notice, I've got one sat here. If you take off one of your boost pipes, you might, might notice a little bit of oily residue in the bottom there, There's just a little bit. And that's what that is. Um, either that or your turbo seals are going, one of the two. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's what you notice a bit of residue, but it burns it off in the engine. So basically, if you imagine your, your car creates a little bit of oily air. That goes through your PCV system. It goes through your puck into your inlet, into your air filter, turbo intake pipe, and then through the engine, and then it gets burned. So it actually is better for the environment. It is a requirement, I believe. I don't know if it's just UK, but most companies, uh, most countries around the world require it for emissions. So you're not dumping oily air out. Um, but Audi fitted it. Do you know what I mean? It works. There's no problems. It doesn't cause any performance issues. Obviously, if there's leaky pipes and stuff, yeah, but I mean, this is 20 years old. So, I mean, what do you expect? Um, but like I said, I'm going to go through this. I'll put a list of all the part numbers for these. Now, I'll also put some links to 7Zap for exact ones for uh, 150-180s um, APXs because the BAMs are slightly different. They don't have, uh, the Apexes don't have as many pipes, and also the three twos. I'm not sure what they have in the way of PCV systems, because I've never actually had to take one apart. But um, I'll put all the links and all the places you can find the part numbers, find the diagrams to show. So if you need certain things, you can go on to like Coverdale Car Parts, you can go on to Auto Dock, you can go on to eBay. If you've got the part numbers, you can go anywhere online and get some second hand parts or some um, quality, non genuine parts. Because I mean, a little rubber T. It's not going to cause you any bother if you buy a non-genuine one. So um, it's certainly worth looking. Just to give you an idea of prices, this hard pipe, it comes as a sort of all as one, this bit to there. Genuine is about £130. I think a, a second a second brand one, new, is about £30 or £40. And it all is is hard pipe. So you do very wrong, very badly to get it wrong and for a, a non-genuine one to be bad. So there is, it is horses for courses. If you can save a genuine one and it works fine, there's certainly no problems that you can see. There's no damage. It doesn't look like any hairline cracks or anything. Keep it. Um, replace the rubber. The rubber pipes, like I said, you can buy silicon ones if you want to zoof it up a bit. Um, you can buy forge ones. I think Creation Motorsport makes some and others. Um, Cloud9 Customs make this, this little aluminium one, aluminium and brass one, which obviously will stand at last forever and ever and ever um and again easy fit just push in you have to push down a little bit hard and then put the clip over it be careful not to fling this thing because i flung it and lost it for about 20 minutes trying to find it um because <laughs> it does come out with a bit of a uh, oomph behind it but yeah um all these parts like i said i'll put all these parts down in the description if you've got boost issues and that's why you're looking at this um head over to our video i'll pop it up in the corner 
one of the corners. Um, I'll pop it up there. It covers all sorts of looking at maths, looking at N75s, boost pipes, all things to look at um, that could cause boost problems. Obviously, this is one of them, but if you've had it already, had it out and looked at it, then you know what you're dealing with. Um, but as always, guys, any questions down in the comments, I'll be more than happy to help anyone. Um, head over to the website as well, theparrotbros.co.uk. We've got links to all the stuff, helpful guides and all stuff like that. But as always, thanks for watching. There's been another video from the Parrot Bros. Bye for now.